what's up everybody? How's everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG and uh, y'all know what time it is. It is time for a Modern Horizons 2 Draft Booster Box opening. This one's going to be for me today. Uh, before we jump into today's video, a quick announcement. Uh, if you check out the banner for the channel or I will also put it in the description for this video, you will now see that I have a TCG affiliate link, something I'm actually quite proud of. And if you're looking for additional ways to support the channel and you are planning on ordering product off of TCG anyway, using the link does help support the channel. It is greatly appreciated and I just want to say thank you all in advance. Um, man, let's talk about some Modern Horizons 2. We're like T minus two months away from Modern Horizons 3, which means Modern Horizons 2 has been out for pushing three years. And uh, as of the filming this video, the draft boxes are about 176. You guys who have followed my channel for a while know that I've opened up a ton of Modern Horizons 2. And I still think, I think this speaks volumes about this set, but I still think there's actually really, even as much of this product has been opened, I don't know how many print runs they're on. I think there's still good value in the product. So uh, why don't we jump in? I'll be quiet now. Let's open some freaking packs and hopefully pull some good stuff. Modern Horizons 2. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, as of filming this video, these boxes are about 175, 176, kind of floating between 175 and 180 for the draft boxes. Still off of their highs. I think when at high, like they were like 220 for a draft box. And as I mentioned, I still think there's good value. We, we know that there's a bunch of really good mythics. I think there's like 24 mythics in the set. And uh, when I checked, which was not long ago, uh, I think 11 of them were over $10. And then there was like three or four that were in like the five to $10 range. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of want want mythics. That's every set. But the fact that 24 mythics and in 11 of them are over ten dollars, you've still got a bunch in the 30 to 40 range. It's pretty good. Obviously, we'll talk about the rares here in a second as well. But why don't we get this party started off with a fate offering, a prismatic ending, a decent uncommon. Still see some play. Lucid dreams. Seal of removal in that reprint slot, and our first rare is a Peru the volatile. Mm hmm. And then captured by Legax as the foil. Sure. So, uh, you know, Ragavan, actually what's crazy is right now, we've seen a little bit of a consolidation. Like the spread has narrowed between, like we've seen, we're seeing cards like Douthy Voidwalker, uh, Sword of Hearth and Home, um, Yavimai, Cradle of Growth. Like cards like those are kind of on their way up. But like Solitude has been training down a little bit. Ragavan got a reprint, so that's what kind of drove that. So we don't have any cards over $40 at this moment for base copies. But we have a lot more cards that are over in that five to ten dollar region than were there previously. Karmic Guide is another rare, and that's in that reprint slot. Followed by a Shodden Dock Hand and a Treasure Token. Cool. Whoa. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's Urza Saga is still all the rage. Ur Urza Saga and Esper Sentinel, I think, are two of the three most valuable cards in this set right now. Uh, Ragavan still pushing forty. There's a Saga about 35-ish, and I think uh, Ristic Buddy is around 32. So it's wild that two of the three most valuable cards in the set right now are actually rares and not mythics. Pretty cool. Roden Ruin. Ruin. Uh, Capricrome. Power Depot. Yavimai Elder. And Necro Goyf. Of course, we are always looking for fetch lands. We love the fetch lands. It's one of the things that's, you know, I'm just, I stockpile fetch lands. Uh, I will take all the enemy fetch lands. Uh, I think Misty Rainforest for the base copy is finally about $20 again, kind of ticking up slowly. I think Scalding Tarn is about $19, right around $19. Uh, Arid Mesa, Verdant Catacombs running kind of neck and neck around $14, $15, $16. So good value there. Hoping to see at least two or three of those per this box. Rare is a Patriarch's Bidding. Uh, I don't think this is over $3 currently, but it is a nice playable card, and I like it as a long term. If they don't reprint it again for a while, it will start to continue to tick up. And then a Soul Talisman as the next rare after that. I think Patriarch's Bidding is like, like $2.50 or something right now. I don't think it's over 3 as of this moment. Uh, of course, other mythics, you know, I mentioned the, the elemental cycle. So Fury's got caught the band hammer, right? So Fury's like $6 at this point. Solitude, I think, is right around 30 I think Endurance is still in that 20-ish dollar range. Um, Grief is right there, like with Solitude. I think it's probably like around 22 23 So the elementals are pretty much still like, there's no bad versions, right? I mean, Fury being banned, it's like 6 bucks, but I think Subtlety is like 18 Soul Snare. Mythic. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Nice. First Mythic, good Mythic. Uh, that is Solitude. As I mentioned, probably pushing right about $30 at this point. Kind of down to $30. 
who knows what will happen when Modern Three, Modern Horizons Three comes out? If if Elementals will still be good or if they'll still be OP, who knows? But for the moment, that is a rock solid mythic, one of the best. Can't do a whole lot better than that. I pulled my fair share of solitudes. Um, the the mythic uh, the the mythic elemental I've probably pulled personally the least is Grief. Actually, I think I've probably only in in again for those of you who've been following and watching my channel for a while, I've opened up like a pretty crazy amount of this product both for myself and, and patrons and um yeah i've probably only pulled like a few griefs i pulled a lot of solitudes so that's not a complaint just an observation flame rift sanctum weaver it's a good playable rare probably in like the two dollar range not i don't think it's above three so i'm still going to put it up there as a playable rare flay essence as a foil uncommon and construct token cool i think in the draft boxes we're probably going to see around four to six mythics on average Seems to be about typical, depending on what we get from the reprint slot. If we can get like a Mirari's Wake or even better, a Cabal Coffers out of that reprint slot, that would be fantastic. All right. Prophetic Titan. Sweep the skies. Chattering Augur. Rare is a Goblin Bombardment. Uh-huh. And next up is a Profane Tutor. Another card that's probably like a, uh, like a $2 card, but a playable card. And so I'll put it up top. And Guardian Kirin. Cool. We talked about the two most valuable rares already with the Urza Saga and the Esper Sentinel. Um, but I did mention, I think Yabamaya Cradle of Growth, like the base copy is up to like $14 at this point. Um, I've been saying forever, I think that that's card, that card is, is eventually in that $20 range. I, I have That's another card I have hung on to, largely hung on to. Uh, Necromancer's familiar. Arcbound Whilp. Arcus Acolyte. Mythi. Oh, 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 repent slot indeed. That is Cabal Coffers. That is a uh, that is a mega hit because that is actually a borderless, which is absolutely beautiful. I think the base coffers uh, is around like 20-ish, 22. So I think the borderless is probably going to be like 25 to 26. Uh, that is really, really good. Uh, mono, uh, mono black coffers is a thing in, in modern. The mono black is, is definitely, so that's a huge hit. I absolutely love it. Uh, between the solitude and the coffers, that's fantastic. And after, <laughs> let's go, <laughs> let's go. Uh, yeah, Esper Ristic Buddy, the Esper Sentinel. Uh, that's probably about thirty-two bucks. So what a freaking pack! Uh, I was asking for a coffers, I got a coffers. I was asking for a Ristic Study, a Ristic Buddy, uh, Esper Sentinel, and that uh, what a what a pack. Whew. Okay, so just point out we're we're like. Three packs left in this first column. We have like a $30 Solitude. Let's call it like a $25 Coffers. And like, let's even just round down and call it like a $30 Esper Sentinel. Not every box is going to be this box. And we're a long way from, from crushing it. But what a start, huh? And if you're asking yourself, why does this guy keep opening Modern Horizons 2? Doesn't he have enough by this point? And I say, hey, I'm an adult. I do what I want. Mog Salvage. And a Svelin. All right, we had to come back down to Earth sometimes. So this is one of those Womp Womp Mythics. I think it's like 50 cents. I don't know. It's, it's, it's actually a perfectly good card. It's just very, you know, Merfolk specific and, mer, mer, you know, <laughs> tribal or kindred specific. Okay. Well, sure. Slide that over. Why not? Okay. And we still haven't hit our first. We haven't even hit our first fetch land yet. There are some bad Mythics. <laughs> Uh, I'm probably due for I've I've said all this these nice things and now I'm gonna get stuck with two Garth one eyes. All right, Feast of Sanity, Infiltrator, Combine Chrysalis, Kyrian Ranger, Rare. Hey, there we go, another Mega Rare, outstanding. Uh, as I mentioned, I think as of right now these are probably sitting right about 14 bucks. So that is a really really strong hit. Excellent. All right, two packs left in this first column, and uh, my goodness, has this first column been electric. Strike It Rich, Terramorph, Captain Ripley Vance, Angelic Curator, and the rare is a Harmonic Prodigy, which is actually, ooh, hey, foil, uh, foil rare Fractured Sanity. Not not going to be like a value target, but a, actually, I mean, 
a still playable rare and a foil version of it, you could do far worse than that. Probably again, like a dollar. I don't think it's I don't think it's carrying substantial value. Not in and with their collector boxes and you know all the amount of this product, like there's very little foil multiplier around. Alright, last pack of the first column. Ether Sworn Sphinx, Rakdos Headliner, Mono Skillion. Rare is a shardless agent. I don't think agent. I think I think this is probably sub sub three dollars. Obviously, a very playable card. Sees play in uh, Team of Rhinos, right? And a verdant command. After that, nice. What a first call. And I am hopeful that with us seeing Esper Sentinel, uh, that this means that we will also be seeing a. Uh, hopefully, it means that Urza Saga that they have a tendency to run together. They of how print sheets work it's not it's not a guarantee but they do have a tendency to find themselves in the same box quite frequently and i'm 100 percent here for that all right flay essence ghost lit drifter liquid metal torque i think liquid metal torque just by itself is like a dollar extruder mythic is torak uh torak's like a dollar also he did have his his fun in the sun at one point especially when solitude was all the rage and it was like kind of anti-solitude but this is like a dollar or two at this point it's a decent mythic, but uh, not otherwise burning up the value. That's okay. Between the borderless coffers and the solitude, I already can't really complain. Um, not my seeing a Douthy Voidwalker. I think Douthies are about ten or eleven dollars. Thraven Watcher, Slag Strider, Sudden Edict, Bone Shredder, and a Timeless Dragon. And Phantasmal Dreadmaw as a foil. Sure. We've got to see our first... Actually, it's kind of like the glass half full. Is that for all the good stuff we have pulled, and we have been fortunate, we have yet to pull our first, our, our, uh, first fetch land also. I would expect that there's probably at least a couple. If you have a, like a fetch land heavy box, I've seen you know four, maybe even five. But the typical is like two to three. All right. Foundation Breaker. Tide Shaper. Barb Spike. Rare is a Karmic Guide. Is it a second to Karmic Guide? I think it is. And a Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp. Well, if there's two Karmic Guides, can there be two Cabal Coffers? Is that a thing? Okay. Archfiend of Sorrows. Raging Visionary. Batterbone. Milliken. <laughs> and a retro frame Verdant Catacombs. That is awesome. That is quite, quite good. Uh, this is probably like uh, low mid 20s, if I had to guess, as far as value on the retro frames. That is that is flat out outstanding. So our first fetch land turns out to be a really good one with the retro frame Verdant Catacombs. That's outstanding. I think the regular Catacombs is about 15. So yeah, I would probably put the retro frame low mid 20s. Maybe like 22, somewhere around that range. 22, 25. Okay. Wow. Flame Tongue Yearling. Kaleidoscorch. Graceful Restoration. Fire and Ice out of that uh, reprint slot. It is a rare. And a Karth the Lion after that. Combine Chrysalis is a foil uncommon. Okay. Usually you're going to get one. Man, the fact that we've had a borderless Cabal Coppers and a Retro Frame. Verdant Catacombs in the same box is pretty it's pretty high end. You're, you're usually good for like one borderless foil rare, or fo not foil, uh, rare or mythic. And then maybe like one to two retro frame uh, rares or mythics. To, so for it to be a fetch land and then a Cabal Coffers as the combination, pretty outstanding. Mishra's Factory. Rare is a Dress Down. Dress Down had its day in the sun at one point. It was like a bolt card. And then it started seeing sideboard play and got up to like five, six, seven bucks. And now it's playable, but not valuable. All right, probably just past the halfway point in the box. Box has uh, been pretty awesome. Scuttle Tide. Kyrion Ranger again. Rare. Hey, there's a solid rare as well. Academy Manufacturer. Uh, the ultimate token guide, right? Just if you Does your deck play tokens? Yes. Does it have Academy Manufacturer? You're messing up if the answer is also not yes. Uh, I think about six, seven bucks at this point. It's a card that uh, 
it like settles, comes down. There was actually a point in time where it would come down to like two bucks, and then another you know commander deck would come out and be like, oh look tokens, and then it would shoot right back up to like ten. I think at this point it's probably just a five to six dollar card until another big token deck comes out, and then it goes up to like ten again. I guess my point is you should probably hang on to at least a couple copies. Young Necromancer, Goblin Trap Runner, Sanctuary Raptor, Rare is an Upheaval, maybe a very mean card, and a Sylvan Anthem, Echoing Return. Okay. So we have hit four Mythics, one out of that reprint slot being the uh, obviously the, the Borderless Cabal Coffers, which I'm definitely hanging on to. And um, so probably good for maybe one to two more Mythics on average. The Underworld Cookbook in the Retro Frame. It's grabbing a squirrel in the sketch. Capricrome again. Soul Snare. Usury. Fortune's Flame as a rare. And that is the token. We might also get another foil rare. It's not uncommon for these boxes to have a couple foil rares in there. Looks like we've got about three packs, counting the one in my hand, in this left in this middle column. Again, I'm amazed, right? For Underworld Hermit. Glinting Creeper, Mystic Redaction, Enchantress Presence, that's a good reprint. That's another solid uh, Enchantress card. And a Misty Rainforest, nice. Very, very nice. Misty is probably, again, I think it's pushing 20 bucks. So uh, here we go. Can't, can't, uh, can't be upset about that. And again, I'm just going back to the point I was starting to make was I'm amazed at for how much of this product. So this product's been around for three years. It has been mainstream, you know, obviously just turned modern on its on its head. And and yet these boxes I still think are they have a really good baseline value. You have bad boxes, right? That that's a thing. Dragons Dragons are in China. That's a DRC. Scurry Oak, actually another quality uncommon. Seal of Cleansing. And a Brea's Apprentice. Uh, you obviously have bad boxes. I've I've pulled my fair share of Oh my god, how many bad Planeswalkers can I get for Mythics in a single box? But with a baseline of two to three fetches, two rares that are over $30, not counting the fetches, and again, 11 Mythics plus that are that are currently over $10, I think the floor is still pretty high. And I think that, again, this just speaks volumes for this product. I know I'm gushing, but Greed, rare is a Gaia's Will. Hey, there we go. Second foil rares, Priest of Felrights. Actually, a decent card in its own right. Doesn't really see, doesn't really get its due. Doesn't really see like a ton of play, but it's solid reanimator. Especially solid like budget reanimator. It's not an expensive card, but it does some things. All right, uh, I think this is the last pack of the second column, the middle column. A little feast of sanity. Prismatic ending, this time in the retro frame, and really, really off-center. Look at that. That's weird. Said and done. Sterling Grove. Hey, there's a solid There's a solid card. Uh, I think Sterling Grove is... It might be above $3. I think it might be. I'm going to put it up there as far as the rares are good. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. There's a Saga. Let's go. I saw the Rhystic Buddy early on. I was like, that seems like a good sign. That seems like a real good sign. So uh, Urza Saga, that's uh, about $33, $34, somewhere in that range. Uh, the second most valuable card in the set currently. And that is a heck of an end to this set. Let's just talk about this real quick. I know we have a whole other column and the video is going to run long and I stink at this, blah, blah, blah. But Solitude, Borderless Coffers, uh, a Retroframe Catacombs, Misty, Esper Sentinel, Urza Saga, Yavimaya. Like we have hit a lot of the high notes. This box is already really strong. Add another fetch land, maybe two. Add one more, two more mythics. And if they're any good, they probably won't be. But if they are, this box is poised to be incredible. All right, Fast and Furious. Bone Shredder. Sanctifier Invec in the retro frame. Not a valuable card, but a card that I have always liked since the set came out. And it's just, it's again, it, it only sees like casual sideboard play, like passive sideboard play, I don't know, like basically Boros, but a card I like, and continue to like, it's just not valuable. All right. I wouldn't mind drafting this again soon. 
Constable of the Rome was a fun set to draft as well. Lazatep Chancellor. Brainstone in the retro. Zuron Orb. And a General Ferris Rockerick. A card I always intend to build around and then I never end up doing. But that card seems incredibly strong. Yeah, we've definitely hit the high notes for this. <laughs> I, I already uh, I already can't uh, can't complain. Even if the box ended right now, I'd be like, yeah, this is a really good box. Squirrel Sovereign. Skyblades Boon. Vidalcan Infiltrator. Scourge, familiar. Rare is a persist. Good, solid, playable rare. Not a valuable rare, but a, a you know, probably a dollar or two. And a Goblin Trap Runner as a foil uncommon. All right, here we go. Break the ice. Captain Ripley Vance. Vectus Gloves. Gorilla Shaman. Mi oh! Oh! Bestest Monkey! Bestest Monkey! Uh, Ragavan. Still 40 bucks. And uh, still a Blade Guard. And still really good. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, so for those scoring at home, uh, the most valuable cards in this set, if I recall correctly, is Ragavan pushing 40, Saga like 34, 35, uh, Sentinel like 32, and then I think Solitude is number four at 30. And we have all of them. <laughs> we have all of them. And then we have a Borderless Coffers, which is probably like 25. Oh, sheesh. I, I, I don't want to hide the Ragavan, but I have to. I hardly ever pull coffers in, and that's a borderless version. I know Ragavan's more expensive, but holy moly with this box. Sheesh. We stay opening Modern Horizons 2. Until Modern Horizons 3 comes out, and then I open lots of that. Lots of that. Combined Chrysalis. Rare is, sure, f fire and ice again as a rare. Why not? It's reprint slot. And a thought monitor and a zombie token. Not even going to complain. And if I pull a Garth, I won't complain about that either because this box has been awesome. Kind of curious though with that, uh, you know, not that I want to be too greedy here. I definitely want to be too greedy here. But uh, with that Verdant Catacombs being a retro frame, I kind of feel like we should be in line for at least one more uh, fetch land. And it wouldn't be terribly shocking if it was like either Marsh Flats or Scalding Tarn. Here we go. Barb Spike. Mono Skellion. Counterspell. Which is also like a, just a dollar uncommon. Rares. Yeah. Let's just hit all the rares. Let's just hit all the good rares. Nah. Not a problem. Uh, Voidwalker. Like 11 bucks. Let's go. And a uh, Funnel Web Recluse after that. Yep. Yep. Box is incredible. Box is incredible. All right. Looks like uh, counting the one in my hand. Five more packs. Whoops. Whoa. Whoa. Calm down there, guy. Five more packs left. Terramorph. Ghost Lit Drifter. Arcbound Whoop. Mock Salvage. Sanctivire and Vec. Sure, we'll double up on our Sanctivires. It's probably not deserving to even be up there, but you know what? Do what I want. All right, four packs left. Is there even like there any other rares that, besides Fetchlands, any other rares that I'm missing that I haven't hit of substance? Probably one or so. I don't know. Rakdos Headliner, Clattering Augur. Another doubling up on Shardless Agents, because why not? And a Chitter Spitter, which is a limited all-star. It's like a pack one, pick one material in draft, in my opinion. Three packs left. Legion Vanguard. Abiding Grace. Steel Dromedary. You have my Elder. Chatterfang, hey, that is also not bad. I think Chatterfang is about 10 bucks. That is a super good quality mythic. Uh, not displeased. That's that's awesome. Wow. And a, a third foil rare, it's a harmonic prodigy. 
which is probably like between I don't know, two, two, three bucks just for the regular. So yeah, that's like a third foil rare. So we're already just not going to complain about that. And uh, on top of that, it's actually not bad. It's not a bad one. Okay, box. I see you. I see you. I'm definitely not putting Chatterfang on top. No offense, Chatterfang. You're quite good. Two packs left. Especially Chatterfang, I'd probably hang on to, like, if you don't have at least a copy for when Bloom Barrel, com Bloom Barrel comes out. Like, that seems like a set that's going to lend itself to that, right? Strike It Rich, Fey Offering, Specimen Collector, and a car sure, I think it's our third Karmic Guide out of that reprint slot. No complaints. Blood, Braid, Marauder, and a token. Last pack. Last pack of what has been an absolutely bonkers box. Here we go, Prophetic Titan, Blazing Rootwalla, Power Depot, Mishra's Factory, and we conclude with a Nykthos Paragon and our token. All right, hey, not bad, right? Holy moly with this box. So, uh, six Mythics, so it's pretty on point, except for like, we crushed it. Uh, like, that is a spread where hitting four really top end Mythics and then only two of the sort of want want Mythics um, two fetch lands. One was the retro frames. I was kind of thinking it might be another, but again, at this point, not a complaint. Urza Saga, Esper Sentinel, Dalphi Voidwalker, Yavimaya Cradle of Growth. Pretty sure there's, there might be one I'm missing aside from fetch lands, but I think those are like the four most valuable rares. And then Academy Manufactory, uh, Manufactor, Sterling Grove, and a bunch of other just really playables. Box is incredible. I don't know. I don't know. What am I supposed to say about Modern Horizons 2? Yes, I'm looking forward to Modern Horizons 3. Yes, I'm going to open up a ton of it. Um... But it's really incredible that Modern Horizons 2, three years after release, that you can still get a draft box and just crush it. Like the, the value hasn't been so diluted that you cannot get back to box price. In fact, there is still better than average odds for given most boxes, right? Like most boxes, it's not a value proposition to open it. You, you, you're you not going to open the, the cost of the box. Otherwise, you would have arbitrage. I think Modern Horizons 2 is one of your better shots. That's going to do it for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button for me. By all means, drop me some comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody, and be well.